So I've had a number of folks in the Bull Central Discord telling me that I have to do a dedicated video on Cristiano Felicio and that this video would be a hit on the channel and get an insane amount of views. Well, I kept saying I disagree, no one cares about Felicio and there's no way that a video like this would perform well. But they kept pushing, probably more trolling than anything else, so more so to just settle a bet on whether this video would in fact do well or not. And with the way that the Bulls season is all but over at this point, well, why not do a dedicated video on the man, the myth, the legend, the Brazilian god, Cristiano Felicio. So what's going on, everyone? You're listening to Bull Central here. Hope you're all doing well. Guys, a quick update. I know some of you have been asking whether I have a Twitter account and that I should get one if I don't have one. I am planning on doing that. I've just been putting it off or I've been focusing a lot of my uh, time and energy into this channel itself. I know I haven't been that active on Instagram either, uh, but I'm going to try to post there more often. So if you're not following that already, the link to my Bulls Central Instagram page is in the description. Also, as I mentioned, this video idea suggestion stemmed from a conversation in the Discord. Uh, the link to the free Discord is in the description as well. Uh, the community has been growing there despite the bulls and their struggles so feel free to join that if you're interested but anyway cristiano felicio a question i hear so often from bulls fans and even non-bulls fans for that matter is how is cristiano felicio in the nba how did he get the contract that he received and why is he even still in the nba because clearly when you watch the guy play if he ever gets any playing time he is clearly not an NBA player. And I hate saying that because I think Felicio seems like such a nice person, but he's not an NBA level talent. He just isn't. But somehow he was able to make it to the NBA and his path to the NBA was a bit of a unique one. Now, Cristiano Felicio started playing professional basketball in his home country of Brazil at a very young age, only 18. Uh, he played with a local club there for three years where he eventually came to the US where he entered a prep academy to become eligible to play in the NCAA. Now, the story of him entering this prep school is actually pretty sad and probably one that deserves a whole separate video, but I highly doubt anyone you know, is gonna actually watch that and I'm not gonna make another dedicated video on Felicio, so I'll mention it briefly here, but essentially, Felicio, as well as a number of other international prospects, had attended a prep school in Sacramento, California to play basketball with the idea that they would gain eligibility to play in the NCAA, which would hopefully give them enough exposure on the national scene to then get drafted into the NBA. Well, it turns out there was something much more sinister going on. You know, the guy who was running this prep school was essentially running a scam where he was treating these players as slaves to do free labor for him, not allowing them to contact their families, using their tuition for his own benefit, having them play crazy amounts of basketball to sell more tickets, which again was a fake school. The individual running this school was leading all of these prospects to believe that he was going to get them ready to be eligible for the NCAA, when of course the school wasn't accredited, wasn't providing any sort of an ed education. And as a result, Felicio, who had initially received a scholarship to play at the University of Oregon in 2013, was deemed ineligible after further review of this sham of a prep school that was being run. Now, I don't know what actually happened to the guy who was running this scam of an operation. From what I understand, he was arrested and charged, but was actually later found not guilty. There isn't a ton of information on what actually became of that whole situation, but obviously the school was shut down. If you want to even call it that, you know, that it was actually a school. And for Felicio, since he wasn't eligible to play in the NCAA, he was forced to go back to Brazil where he picked up his professional career for the league in his home country. Now, what surprise, you know, you is that he, what might surprise you anyway, I guess I should say, is that he is actually a three-time Brazilian league champion. He is a FIBA International Leagues champion and a FIBA America Leagues champion. He was actually a very solid player in Brazil, a promising young player, you know, given the fact that he was a starter for the national Brazilian team in the FIBA World Cup and America's League Championship, he was one of the better players on his club uh, in, in Brazil, which again, it's a professional league in Brazil that isn't a European league, which has much higher quality talent, you know, with players playing overseas, but Brazil still has some solid talent with multiple players who eventually came to play in the NBA. So because Felicio, was receiving, you know, as a young and talented big man playing in Brazil, and he, you know, he started receiving interest from NBA scouts, and one person in particular who piqued his interest was none other than Gar Foreman. And as a result, the Chicago Bulls invited Felicio to join their Bulls Summer League in 2015, where he joined guys like Doug McDermott and Bobby Portis. Now, Felicio didn't initially make the team after the Summer League, but rather, using the flexible assignment rule, the Bulls had signed him on December 31st, 2015 to their G League affiliate at the time 
time, which was the Canton Charge, before the Windy City Bulls were established. And at that time, it was also the D League, not the G League. But he was shortly called back up to the Bulls on January 16th, and then played in his first game on March 17th of 2016, where he scored six points and 10 rebounds. And then just two days later, he made his first career start in the NBA, replacing an injured Pau Gasol. A few games later, he had one of the best games of his season, shooting seven for seven from the field with 16 points, five rebounds, and two blocks. Yeah. I don't think we've ever seen a game like that from Felicio since, but he then actually followed up the next game scoring 16 points yet again, and mind you, this was all while the Bulls were dealing with an injury to Pau Gasol, so it was huge for the Bulls to see this rookie who sort of came out of nowhere and was playing incredibly well for just barely making it you know, into the league out of his way from the G League affiliate. Now, you can see where I'm kind of going with this because Felicio entered into the NBA, stepped up for the Bulls in a big way, and right off the bat had some big games for a young big man who was only 23 at the time. And of course, that made guard packs salivate at the potential of this kid thinking they were geniuses for finding this relatively unknown player from Brazil and thinking that he was an up and coming talent because what young player starts off their career in the NBA that strong right off the bat, right? And especially with the pressure that the Bulls were in at the time when he was tasked to play big minutes with Pau Gasol being out of the lineup. Because keep in mind, this was the first season of Fred Hoiberg's tenure, and this team featured a Derrick Rose, Jimmy Butler, and Gasol trio, a team that had championship aspirations the year prior, but fell short in the playoffs, which ultimately led to the firing of Tom Thibodeau. And the following season under Hoiberg, the Bulls were incredibly disappointing with the same lineup and were fighting for an even eight seed in the playoffs, which they ended up not getting and narrowly missing the playoffs as a result. Now with Felicio coming in and actually helping the Bulls to win some games when the majority of those games were really high pressure stakes must win type situations, he showed up decently well for a young player who was making his NBA debut. And I actually remember at the time, the Bulls beat writer Nick Friedel, who I never really liked by the way, but he tweeted during one of these games, the one surprising bright spot for the Bulls is the emergence of Cristiano Felicio and that, you know, it was an otherwise lost season, so it was something to look forward to. And I remember agreeing with that, I won't lie. I was getting a little hyped on this guy because he was actually playing solid basketball for rookie and looked somewhat promising, not thinking he was gonna be a star, but a quality backup big for the Bulls that they could use for the future. I genuinely believed that, and part of it was because the media had started hyping it up a bit. Not the national media, but the Bulls media anyway. Now the following season, after the Bulls traded Rose, they let Gasol walk in free agency. And of course, this was the season where Gar Pax thought it was a good idea to bring in a past prime uh, Dwayne Wade and Rajon Rondo to sell tickets, even though you know, they had claimed that they were gonna start focusing on getting younger and more athletic, and also bringing in guys who were going to fit Hoiberg's ideal type system of pace and space offense, which was predicated on outside shooting. Outside shooting when your team is being led by Jimmy Butler, Dwayne Wade, and Rajon Rondo. Yeah, but hey, they had Doug McDermott, right? Anyway, in the season for Felicio, that season, he played okay, not anything incredibly impressive, but in 66 games, he averaged 4.8 points per game and 4.7 rebounds on 57% shooting. Again, that's nothing to be excited about by any means, but for his age, the fact that he was still showing a little bit of promise, this was his sophomore season, and as a young big man who can, you know, give you some decent minutes off the bench as a backup big, you couldn't be too upset about it because, again, he was making a minimum salary. You didn't really expect an insane level of productivity from him. Now, the upcoming offseason, this is where the Bulls decided to go full rebuild and trade Jimmy Butler for Zach Levine, Chris Dunn, and the Timberwolves' number seven pick, which ultimately became Lowry Markinen. They bought out D. Wade and didn't pick up the team option on Rondo. Now, since the Bulls were in full rebuild mode, Gar Pax thought it would be smart to also extend an offer to their young backup center in Felicio, but not just giving him a one or two year deal to see how he pans out, but rather offering him a four year, $32 million fully guaranteed contract. Yeah, leave it to Gar Pax to make that kind of desperation move. I'm sure the thought behind it was, well, this kid does show promise. Rather than signing him to a one-year deal to see how he improves, let's lock him in for now because his value is low enough and the contract will look like a steal by his fourth year. Because you don't want to give him a one-year deal, he has a breakout season and now you're going to have to sign him for considerably more since his value has gone up. Well, of course, that backfired. Felicio never really progressed at all. In fact, he really regressed, barely got any playing time. And even to this day, the Bulls are still paying him for that bad contract 
Trek, which is finally coming off the books this summer. Now, guys, look, in Felicio's defense, he was offered that contract. You cannot blame him for taking that deal. Any one of us would have taken that contract if we were Cristiano Felicio, okay? None of us would have been like, you know what? I'm really not worth that much, and I think you should offer me less. And that really applies to all bad contracts across the league. Like, you can be mad as fans at the players for being, uh, you know, playing on horrible contracts and not actually playing up to their value and claiming that it's the player's fault for stealing money from the franchise. But no, the front office gives out bad contracts, not the players. So I understand the fr frustration from fans towards Felicio and that he's useless, but really we have no one to blame but Garpax for giving that contract that he had no business in getting in in the first place. Sure, Felicio could have worked a little harder to better himself, but they should have known that this guy didn't have any more potential than being a rotational player at best. He was never going to be worth the contract that they gave him at any point in his career. So anyway, if you ever wonder how the heck did Felicio make his way into the NBA, well, he can be happy that he got lucky that Gar Pax happened upon him when they were looking at scouting reports. He happened to have a few good games that were impressive enough to where the Bulls started their rebuild. They felt he fit the timeline for what they were trying to do. He got a ridiculous contract as a result. And for any other player who might have received a summer league invitation, a few 10-day contracts, maybe they get a one-year contract. Instead, Felicia was able to secure a four year guaranteed deal that allowed him to remain in the NBA this whole time. I will say though, Felicio does seem like a great guy. I mean, the second he got that contract, he bought his mom a house in Brazil. He paid for multiple family members' educations. He's helped out around the community and has been very pleasant with the media when he's actually interacted with them anyway. So I do feel bad somewhat that he gets so much hate across the entire Chicago fan base. And I'm sure that's never a good feeling for a player, especially when he just accepted an offer that the front office gave him. Nothing more than that. I think we can all agree that after his contract expires though, Felicio will likely never see a game in the NBA again and will likely go back to playing professional basketball in Brazil. He should have never received that contract that he did in the NBA from the get-go, but that's what you get sometimes when you're dealing with an incompetent front office. Anyway, I, you know, I wanna know what you guys think. Do you guys blame the front office or Felicio himself for that four year contract and really the non-existent role that he's played in those four years? What's funny is that Felicio is actually the longest tenured Chicago Bull on this roster followed by Denzel Valentine, which is sad to say, but that's where we are at this point. I'm curious to see how you guys think about this video, uh, how you think it will actually do. Let me know in the comments uh, what you guys think. As always, be sure to subscribe if you're a Bulls fan as I do post daily Bulls content. Thanks again for tuning in guys, and I will catch you in the next one.